Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Alex Flood. The Tree of Hope ceremony was a big success once again this year as four trees were lit up this evening and several police services across Ontario joined in on the festivities. Mitchell Ringos has more. The ceremony was the third time the police service has set up a tree in honour of the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. This year all three trees were set up with the newest addition adding 1,000 red Christmas lights. Along with the three decorated trees there was a new addition of a smaller tree that was covered in orange lights for the Every Child Matters campaign which honours the first 215 remains discovered. This year's ceremony hosted a variety of speakers, live drumming, a sacred fire, and last but not least, the all-awaited lighting of the trees. The Tree of Hope project was created in 2019 by Thunder Bay Police Service Constable Charlene Bordeaux, who spoke about what it means for six other police services to have their own tree lighting ceremonies this year as well. This is a, a community-driven event. It's more about the community. It's not about me. It's supported by the, by the police service. And I was just overjoyed to hear other police services accept that challenge. Bordeaux says the police association was fully on board with the idea back in 2019, which the Thunder Bay Police Association president, Colin Woods, says is even more important to continue to support the movement to this day, especially here in Thunder Bay. We are, you know, a hub for the First Nations communities in northwestern Ontario. And if this city uh, and this service can, uh, can start a project like this to build, uh, you know, build the relationship even stronger, um, it, it just, it's that, you know, it's, it's important and it's that much more important that it continues to. Also speaking at this event was newly appointed Minister of Indigenous Services, Patty Haidu, who was very emotional after being given a medallion to show a trust in the partnership with the police force and the Indigenous community. This is a really important step in that process of gaining trust and it's part of the journey that the Thunder Bay Police Service has been on. Um, but to invite community in and to light up a tree that symbolizes, you know, the number of missing and murdered girls and women across the country um, to pledge in their own actions that they're going to do more for the Indigenous community, more for building trust, more for women and girls in particular, that's very powerful. And with it being such an emotional night for everyone who attended, both Bordeaux and Haidu spoke about trying to get the tree lighting all the way to Parliament Hill in Ottawa for next year. Mitchell Ringos, TBT News. The designated truck route issue is making its return to Thunder Bay City Council. At-large Councillor Trevor Gertuga is asking city staff to bring a new bylaw as soon as possible after the last two were defeated on close votes. Gertuga will speak about his frustration with council over the continued lack of action on this issue. He wants the truck route to move ahead as a way to eliminate big trucks on Dawson Road. The DTR has been approved in principle, but the bylaw to implement it has yet to receive a majority vote. Gertuga believes councillors want to push the decision to the next term. So I think the frustration probably with them is that it's when it came to council, people have just denied the by turned down the bylaw they haven't brought any recommendations or suggestions um so it just that just proves to me that they're not looking at any kind of bylaw they just they're just waiting till the next term of council i think and and that's not how we should should, should do things the city will also sign off on a letter to Ontario's health minister outlining two proposals. The first outlines the need for a mental health and addiction centre, as well as a submission relating to addiction crisis beds. And the Lakehead Social Planning Council will present their yearly report on poverty reductions to the city. And despite a promise of consultation with communities in the region, it appears the proponents of a plan that would see ambulance service scaled back in Greenstone and along the North Shore have fallen short of that promise, according to municipal leaders in the region. Adam Riley has more. It began in 2020 when it was announced the ambulance bases in Red Rock, Nipigon, Scriber and Terrace Bay would be closed and amalgamated into two bases near those communities and Beardmore's would be closed altogether. Immediately, the municipalities in the region rallied and held protests against the proposal, which forced Superior North EMS and the City of Thunder Bay, who controls ambulance services in the Thunder Bay District, to rethink and consult with those communities. Nipigon Mayor Richard Harvey says the plans presented to him so far had assumptions that made no sense. 
we look at and are absolutely ridiculous assumptions, assumptions about the region and about what we're wanting to do, but what, some of the things that we would be willing to do, that it was simply, well, you didn't talk to us about this, why would you even put that in there when it's something that, no, of course we don't want to do that. Harvey is also worried about the potential downloading of costs. Earlier this year, SNEMS began a pilot project that will see Ambutrans, a private entity, take over non-urgent patient transfers. But that pilot is limited to three years. That's something neighbouring Red Rock Mayor Darkeese Robinson is concerned about, especially the impacts and potential to have it all fall back to where they were before the pilot project began. What's going to happen after three years? They don't know. So that money is either going to be um, those transfers, uh, it, that's going to be downloaded to the municipalities, the hospital, or the patient themselves. Well, they'll have to pay for that service. And if the hospitals don't want to do it, patients can't pay, um, and the municipalities aren't going to fund that, uh, you're going to have to use EMS services. Greenstone Mayor Renaud Beaulieu says his council has passed a motion to have Beardmore Ward Councillor Claudette Trottier work with First Nations in the Beardmore area to keep something in the community. But he admits there will be a cost. You know, we're talking about a building that's redundant. It's, 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 it's got to go. So we're talking a $2 million investment there. We're talking about the cost of what it is to have the service there. That's not, that's not covered by us. It's covered par partially by us, but also by the province. Adam Riley, TBT News. The mayor of Atacokan wants to push for more road infrastructure work as the clock winds down on the current term of council. Over the last three years, the town has put dollars into upgrading its sewage treatment system and pumping stations, as well as its arena, pool and fitness center, which Dennis Brown says has benefited the health and well-being of the town. But with less than a year left in his term, he wants to shift focus towards improving the roads in Atacokan. Brown acknowledges there is funding available to assist the town, but overall, the work won't be cheap. We have to spend money on uh, uh, upgrading as much as we can on some of the roads. And we do have some money to do. We have uh, money uh, for $5 million from the provincial government but that's in the federal government, but that uh, can take five years. But we, we need to do that, and we need to do probably another $5, $10 million because there's all kinds of work that has to be done. The consortium manager with the Student Transportation Services of Thunder Bay is calling on City Council and the local police service to enact stop arm cameras on school buses amid concerns surrounding illegally passing vehicles. Since the beginning of the school year, local school bus drivers have reported 188 vehicles in the city have failed to stop when students are boarding or exiting the buses. Consortium manager Craig Murphy says the STSTB has received very little feedback from city administration and police on implementing a camera system to hold these motorists accountable. Murphy adds the stop arm cameras are a cheap solution which could avoid a potentially costly outcome. The agreement with the city would allow uh, a company to install the cameras on all the buses at no charge to the city or the bus companies or the school boards. And as the uh, city collects the fines from those who illegally pass the school bus, uh, the agreement would stipulate a certain percentage of that ticket would go back to that company to cover their costs. In the past, a local school bus driver was given the go-ahead by city police to install a GoPro to help catch these perpetrators. But until a proper citywide system is in place, Murphy doesn't see this issue going away anytime soon. The federal Conservatives have now announced their shadow cabinet. And once again, Kenora MP Eric Melillo has been tapped to critique the Trudeau government. Melillo has served in several shadow cabinet positions since 2019, including as critic for the Ministry of Northern Affairs and FEDNOR. Now he is solely responsible as the critic for FEDNOR, which itself has a new minister in charge, Patty Haidu, from the neighbouring riding in Thunder Bay. Melillo says this is the first time since Trudeau took power in 2015 that someone from Northern Ontario has represented FEDNOR. He says he's looking forward to working with Haidu, but notes he will keep her to account. From the overall point of view, it's, you know, it's about ensuring that the, the, the programs and the supports coming through FEDNOR are uh, addressing the needs uh, of Northern Ontario. To put it simply, uh, if you look at the tourism that was hit very hard 
uh, throughout COVID and uh, some of the regional relief funding that was brought forward through FENOR. Uh, a lot of it uh, did uh, still leave out many uh, seasonal businesses. Uh, there wasn't, uh, in some cases, uh, enough money in the pot. Join now with Kurt Black. Kurt, some local hockey action this weekend. Uh, the Thunder Wolves were back out on the ice. Yeah, they were, Alex. But you know what? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't one probably to write home to. But you know what? That's what happens when you got 15 young guys on the team, 15 freshmen. There's going to be some growing pains here and there. We'll put a wrap on the T-Wolves' three-game set against the Rams right after the break. Thank you.